thought that today was July 20th, but then I looked and it's July 21st. Time be going by way too fast. Anyway, first question came from my boy, George K. And he said, Wiley and Acho may be on to something. Uh-oh. Uh, it, it, it must be one or the other because they usually not on the same page when it comes to a lot of the stuff. And we obviously about to ask something about the Ravens, so... This kind of scares me. Anyway, he said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. Uh, I just seen a segment of Wiley and Acho, and they were discussing that QBs that win a Super Bowl with the team that drafted them do so within the first five years uh, of that quarterback being on the team. Yeah, we have seen that a lot recently um, from quarterbacks who won the Super Bowl. Obviously, minus Matt Stafford because he went to the Rams. Obviously, minus Tom Brady because he did it on the Bucks. Uh, minus Nick Foles, because he did it with the Eagles. Um, but normally, that's how it goes down. Um, I mean, Ravens got experience with Joe Flacco. But anyway, continuing. He said they were saying it would be smart business. Oh, no, excuse me. They were saying smart business would be not to give Lamar an extension. And, well, if we don't get to the a Super Bowl, then to franchise tag him for the next two years and that if it doesn't happen within seven years, then it's not going to happen. You really need to hit a full segment to get the full context, but they may be on to something. Just curious of your thoughts on this. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I did see that whole thing. Um, that was Acho. Acho has this weird thing right now where he just really does not want a lot of quarterbacks to get paid. Because uh, I saw he was saying something, a uh, different context, of course, uh, and different argument. But for Kyler Murray, he was like, no, Kyler Murray, uh-uh, he shouldn't get paid either. But anyway, um, I disagree. Uh I don't even think this should even be a conversation. There, there should be no question on Lamar Jackson getting paid. Have, have, have we not? Do we need reminders of everything that he's done for these Baltimore Ravens? And even though, yeah, they haven't made it to the Super Bowl yet. Um, like, what, 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 what does he need to do to show how valuable he is to the Ravens in order for people to really be like, no, 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 to, to not even like entertain that. That that he should maybe shouldn't get paid. He, he definitely should get paid. That that there is no doubt in my mind that Lamar Jackson should get his bread for everything. And and that's another thing too. For, for everything that he's already done. And of course, he ain't no perfect quarterback. He got his flaws. He got his issues. He got his thing that that he got to get better at for sure. But even with that, for everything that he's done for this franchise, for the city, for the team, all the bread that he's brought in, the prime time, that <laughs> just the success, just changing the trajectory of the Ravens because they were headed down a slippery slope in 2018. Because we can go to the year before and the year before and the, and the year before and the year, like, well, not 2014, but... 2015 and 16 and 17 and the way that 18 was headed it was not pretty my friends it was not pretty in 2018 it was headed down that same path it was ugly but then lamar came in <gasps> Ooh, whoa the ravens have been resuscitated they, they got life again and he the life hasn't come out the ravens ever since and again, I just, no. So, no, they, they are not on to anything. Yeah, QBs do usually win it within the first five years. Hey, hopefully Lamar gets it in the fifth. Um, but no, he, there's no reason to doubt uh, uh, that. No, I think I worded that wrong. You should not doubt uh, that he, I think I worded it wrong again. Lamar should get paid. Bottom line, he, he should get paid. He has earned his money. He deserves his money. And he will get his money eventually. I just hope that it comes from the Ravens. Now, uh, he also said Sarah Ellison was saying she believes Bateman can turn into an alpha dog receiver similar to Jamar Chase. Also think she's on to something. Uh, your thoughts, my friend. Love what you do. And you are appreciated. Hashtag team keep it clean. I hey, appreciate that, George. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I think he definitely can. Um, he got the, the physical tools. He got... Uh, the, the size, the speed, um, he got hands, he go up and get it. So yeah, I, I think he can for sure. It's just a matter of opportunity, um, and help too. Yeah, this feels like a dream, and you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving, right engraving.
Next question came from my boy Marco G. He said, hey, what's good, Engraving? It's your boy MG back with another annoying question. Actually, a two-ball question. First, uh, since the Ravens will most likely bring five tight ends, including Ricard, uh, and probably four running backs into the season, do you see them going light at inside linebacker with possibly three uh, and maybe two on the practice squad? Um, I, I, I could see them going light at, because obviously Patrick Queen and Josh Bynes, I think those two, excuse me, are locks to make the roster. Malik Harrison, um, he is somebody that I think they may have him as sort of one of those not necessarily do it all type of guys, but sign kind of like a do it all, like inside and outside linebacker. I think they will have him as somebody s slotted to play both positions. Um, so that would allow them a little more flexibility uh, when it came to the roster. And then, of course, you're going to have Chuck Clark there uh, a, a little bit. You're going to have Kyle Hamilton there a little bit. You got possibly Tony Jefferson if he makes the roster. He could be there a little bit. So I think that, um, yeah, they could end up going light uh, at inside linebacker. Uh, he said, reason I say that is because I don't know any other position we can go light on given our solid depth at those other positions. And secondly, with Patrick Queen being the only lock at inside linebacker to play almost every down, I don't see anyone locked into that second inside linebacker position. Bynes has a great mind, but father time is catching up to him when it comes to speed and agility, and I don't think Malik Harrison is proven is a proven every down guy. Well, yeah, he he just he hasn't had the opportunity to really be out there every down. Um, rookie season, he was out there a good amount. Uh, then uh, last year, you know, remember the unfortunate situation. So he just hasn't really been able to be out there uh, too much. Uh, he said, with that said, given Harrison, Bynes, and versatility, we have at safety position with Clark Jefferson. I should have just read this whole thing before I started talking. We said the same thing. Uh, do you see the second inside linebacker position being done by committee? I <laughs> hope you and your family are doing well in peace. Yeah, see, that I, I got I to gotta start reading the whole thing before I answer because... We end up saying the same thing a lot of times. Top five, top five, top five. Next question came from my boy, Thomas. He said, hey, Graven, hope you are well and hope you have the time to cover this. Top five lists I made uh, in one of your videos. Number one, top five Ravens tight ends list. Uh, he said, number one, Shannon Sharp. Number two, Mark Andrews. Number three, Todd Heap. Number five, Dennis Pitter. I mean, excuse me, number four, Dennis Pitter. Uh, and number five, <laughs> Dallas Clark, Ooh, yikes! No, 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 no! Take take him off, take him off right now. Remove that. Um, Dallas Clark was he was a yikes for the Ravens. That that was in 2013. Oh, that was so nasty. I remember watching him. It just felt like when you were watching him run, it was so sad, man. And he of course had a lot of success with Peyton Manning over the years and whatnot. But um, I put Owen Daniels over him. Like Owen Daniels was much better than Dallas Clark. Uh, for the Ravens at tight end, I would even put Vasante Shanko over him. <laughs> like, but I would put Ed Dixon over him as well. Um, who else, man? Like, oh no, yeah. Take, I'm I'm cool with the list, all except for number five. Next two questions came from my guy Gold Morano. He said, "Ain't Raven had to come back with yet another question." As you are well aware, former Ravens and other former players, pimps, pred predictors, and progn pro <laughs> prognosticators are voicing their lack of faith in Lamar's ability to win a Super Bowl under the current scheme or his style of play. Hollywood told us that Lamar would be great under any system and that he's going or he's doing what he is asked to do under Greg Roman's system and that all the receivers who have played with Lamar would attest to the same. I hope it isn't true, but the negative voices seem to be beginning to affect Lamar. Uh, are you concerned as am I that Lamar may want a one way ticket to the, <laughs> to the Miami Dolphins in 2023 just to prove to the naysayers in the whole NFL world that he is, in fact, a winning quarterback while throwing from the pocket? Um, my, my thing with that, uh, we know that Lamar, he hears everything that people say about him. And what I'm hoping that he doesn't go out there and do this year, and I'm hoping the Ravens don't go out and do this year, because we've seen it in the past where they've let the outside noise get in and they've responded to it on the field. Uh, and it has gone both good and bad. Um, and I just, like, obviously remember... 2019, that Dolphins game, first game of the season, first week one start for Lamar, threw five touchdowns, which was great. He didn't even hardly run the ball. Um, but after that, he's like, oh, not bad for a running back. So he's, he's, he's obviously listening, had, had it on his mind a lot that people had been saying about him. Um, but then there was a, 
Oh no, actually the year before that. Um, so the Ravens have been letting a lot of noise get in from jump, but the year before that, uh, his f- first game was against Andy Dalton and the Bengals, I believe. Uh, then, and he had obviously run a lot in that game. Um, but then the second game, before the second game, so many uh, analysts and commentators, they were like, oh man, look, Lamar Jackson, he's running the ball too much. He shouldn't run the ball nearly that much. And da 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 he needs to stop running as much. He needs to be throwing the ball a lot more. He, he can't be running as much. What did the Ravens come out and do that first half? They were forcing themselves to throw the ball. Even though the runner was working, they were forcing themselves to throw the football. And again, that, that was Lamar's rookie year. Um, I remember he did say that he had been still adjusting to the size of the NFL football. Uh, he also didn't really have chemistry with the guys that he was out there with because he wasn't the starter. He was a backup. And the backups, they practice with the backups. Uh, they don't practice with the starters. So um, anyway, uh, they were forcing in the first half of that Raiders game. Remember, they, they just forced the pass, running here and there, but really forcing the pass. And then something clicked and it was like, oh, wait a minute. Who are we? What do we do? And what, what have we had success with? That's really the, the question right there. And then they end up changing it up. Um, so my point is that I, I hope that both Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, they don't go out there trying to play prove it ball. Like, all right, we got to do this to shut these people up. Now, we know Lamar can throw. We know Lamar can throw from the pocket. Now, in order for him to, to throw from the pocket, he got to have a pocket. Uh, so hopefully all the investments that the Ravens put in the offensive line pay off. I, I think they will, especially if Ronnie Stanley is healthy. Um, but, yeah. So I, I just, as far as him to going to Miami, um, oh, that would be heartbreaking uh, for many Ravens fans, including myself. I've already said plenty of times if that happened, I would cry. Now, if he did go, there, if, if, if there was one place where he did go, if he, if he ever didn't end up playing for the Ravens, that would be the only place that I, I would not even want him to go. But I would uh, if, if he didn't play for the Ravens, that would be the only place that I would choose for him to go. Cause I know they, they will go all out in order to make him happy, uh, in order to provide him with weapons. That's what I'm hoping the Ravens do it. Uh, I'm hoping the Ravens do it. Um, but we'll see. Um, but I don't think Lamar is like right now, like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to go down to Miami. I, I don't think he's on that right now. I don't. Um, so, anyway. Uh, and because he said that Lamar may want a one-way ticket to the Dolphins in 2023 just to prove the naysayers in the whole NFL world that he is, in fact, a winning quarterback while throwing from the pocket. He's already proved that. He proved that in 2019. I was already proven. So, um, yeah, he said, if our quarterback believes that Roman is cemented into his position for the foreseeable future, uh, could Lamar's only opportunity to play a more traditional quarterback style come by playing with a different offensive coordinator with a different scheme? Ah, now that that's a question right there. Um, and maybe I should have read that before I start going. Um, but that that's 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 where it goes to Ravens philosophy and what what their plans are, um, because it feels like. With, with Roman, he there's just been limitations with this scheme. It seemed like the scheme has sort of held Lamar Jackson back. And I know so many people, oh, but, but look, he won unanimous MVP in 2019. How could his scheme hold him back? Where has the, the growth been? Where has the evolvement been? Where have the adjustments been? Where have the end game situations, the consistent in game situations been to where if plan a is not working then they got a plan b if plan a isn't working temporarily they go to plan b hey plan b ends up stopping to work and they go to plan a again or they go to plan c where has that been and that's not just with greg roman that falls on john harbaugh too it's not just a g row thing this this whole thing is not just a g row thing so a lot of it was has to do with just Ravens' philosophy as a whole. But anyway, he said, what would fans think of, say, or do to Harbaugh if they felt that he chose Roman over Lamar? A lot of fans already feel like he did do that. Uh, he said, surely you remember the tweet that Lamar sent to Hollywood stating that he, Lamar, looks forward to playing with Hollywood again in the future. He knows that Hollywood will never don a black and purple uh, ever again. And Kyler Murray isn't going anywhere anytime soon. The only way I see two Floridians playing together again would be in Miami or the Pro Bowl. But 
that can't happen with them playing in different conferences. <laughs> I'm growing concerned about the way that Harbaugh and DaCosta are not handling the situation. Somebody in the front office needs to place a call to all former Ravens who want to make illic illicit comments about current players. Any concerns in Graven? I don't remember that tweet. I, I, I don't I don't remember that one. Um about Lamar saying that he looked forward to playing with Hollywood in the future. Uh yeah, I I don't I don't remember that one at all. Um but anyway, uh yeah, hey, I mean, anything possible to the name possible no more. Uh so much just depends on so much, man. Like, and I know that's so vague, but it does so much depends on so much. I, I know a lot of people, whenever you hear people talk about uh Lamar Jackson to the Dolphins and any like rumors or or, or not even conspiracy, but when people just bring that up, a lot of people immediately shoot it down. Oh, and that'll never happen. It ain't happening. Stop saying that. Don't talk about that. Lamar ain't got no contract yet from the Ravens. He ain't got no deal from the Ravens. He's on a fifth year option from the Ravens. That's it. There is no deal. Until Lamar Jackson signs a deal with the Baltimore Ravens, signs that contract extension, and they present him a contract extension that's a good one, and he signs it, then there's no deal. Until that point. So anything's possible. As much as people don't want to hear about it, as much as people don't want to talk about it, as much as people don't want to think about it, anything is possible. And you, you can say what you want about it. Oh, man, it's crazy. It's far-fetched. It's wild. It's, 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 it's atrocious. It's this, it's that. It's not impossible. You could deny so much stuff about Lamar to the Dolphins, Lamar to, to really wherever. But I know specifically the Dolphins because he's from down here in South Florida and the Dolphins. I think a bigger reason that so many people see, like, see it as a possibility is because they know the Dolphins are willing to do whatever. They are willing to throw whatever at whatever team for whoever. They want so that they are willing. They first round picks, they don't care about those. They say, hey, take it. Take it. I, I think so many fans are trying to shoot it down because they don't want it to be true. But they know in the back of their minds the Dolphins would be willing. And I think they also know in, in, in their minds, too, that you know how much the Ravens love them draft picks. We've seen it so much times where the Ravens won't come off of draft picks in order to acquire people. But what if somebody threw a bunch of draft picks at them to take somebody off their hands? Especially depending on how this whole contract thing goes. Are the Ravens willing to pay Lamar Jackson like top, top dollar? Not just top dollar, but top, top dollar. Real money. So, I mean, we'll see. Hopefully the Ravens and, and Lamar, they, 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 they get this thing sorted out. And they also get him another nice weapon and wide receiver. But hopefully they, 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 they get this thing sorted out. And we ain't even got to worry about none of this. But until until the Ra until we get that announcement, oh, the Ravens and Lamar Jackson agreed on a contract extension. Anything's possible. As much as you don't want to hear it or want, don't want to admit it or don't want to believe it, anything is possible. His next question. He said, Engraven, I've heard you say that uh, with the current roster, you have the Ravens rated at an AFC championship game level. I want to share your sentiment, but I'm not quite as generous. With the upgrades made by Las Vegas, Miami, Denver, the Chargers, Cleveland, Cincinnati, etc., I see climbing that mountain as a daunting task. Oh, it is. It is. It would be tough. Very, very tough. Lot. AFC is stacked, man. AFC is stacked. <laughs> they got so many good teams in the AFC So many well put together rosters With so many playmakers on both sides of the ball So it is a tough task He said all things are possible But I have our team scrapping To finish at 10-7 and 7 with a wild card Based on the opposing teams on the schedule Yeah the Ravens got a really tough schedule Very very tough schedule Very tough schedule uh, He said JK isn't expected to start the season According to NFL Network Oh yeah JK <laughs> oh, Okay, I, I know when he sent this then um, but JK, he, he shut that down. I mean, now he got to prove it. Like, don't, you came out and said that. So now the pressure's on JK. JK put a lot of pressure on himself by coming out and doing that. Like, hey, I'm tired of all the noise. I'm tired of people talking. I'm tired of being quiet. I'll be ready for week one. I might not even go on PUP. All right, now you, nah, now you got to follow through. Uh, something we all should have been able to predict based on his, his date of injury and the severity. I don't see Super Bowl in our future unless... Eric DaCosta gets aggressive about DK Metcalf or Debo, who are still unhappy with their 
contracts. And we kept there was a couple of days, a couple of rumors were going around about um, Debo, uh, where his trainer said, "Oh, he's about to get paid." Uh, then some reporters came out and they were like, "Oh no, he ain't about to get paid." So I mean, we'll we'll see. Cause you, no, nobody ever knows Well some people do But we'll see what happens with that Cause stories could change Situations could change in an instant um, He said Would you just close your eyes with me for 5 seconds And just imagine e- either receivers out there With our tight ends Our running backs Our supporting cast of wide receivers And our quarterback Just imagine the havoc our offense would cause in the AFC Those other teams wouldn't know what hit them Oh my goodness Our 10 year wait would finally be over wouldn't you agree he said 10 and 7 right now but 14 and 3 with dk or debo (laughs) i love it i love it and yeah i've said it like i feel like ravens right now their their ceiling um is is afc championship but if they got uh if they got a, a significant receiver to go along with everything that they got now I would say Super Bowl. I would say Super Bowl. I would say their ceiling would be Super Bowl. Um, Because I feel like they're close. I feel like they're they're, they're close. I feel like they're not there yet, but I feel like they're very, very close. But, hey, hopefully, either way, whether they get somebody or not, hopefully they prove me wrong. We'll see. I got my doubts, but we'll see. Hopefully, the, the guys that whoever ends up being on the team ends up stepping up and just ascending. And going off, um, because again, I'm I'm not, because I don't want anybody to get it twisted. And I don't think anybody does get it twisted. Um, I'm definitely I'm not rooting against the guys that the Ravens have at all. We're not doing that. We're definitely going for them and, and hoping that they do very well uh, in their careers as Baltimore Ravens, and then whatever happens after that too. I hope they all go off. Um, but I just I would love if if the Ravens went into this thing. With more proven uh, talent at the wide receiver position, in addition to all the guys that they got now, it would just just to make everybody's job that much easier, make Lamar's job that much easier, make Greg Roman's job even easier, uh, make everybody's job that much easier, man. And what, the more talent, the better. Why, who wouldn't want to add more talent? Yeah, this feels like a dream.